world's most powerful person is the President of the United States. We present Marine One, so you may see his method of getting around town. The wealthiest 2.5% of houses in the USA are less expensive than this chopper. Hello and welcome back to our channel, Wealthy. This is what the $237 million Marine One helicopter looks like from the inside. Let's get started right away, shall we? The employment of Marine One dates back to 1957, when Dwight D. Eisenhower became the first president to do so. The president intended to visit his vacation residence, but arranging the motorcade would have been prohibitively expensive. The president convened a meeting of his staff because he was at a loss for what to do. He then gave the directive to discover a speedy and inexpensive means of transportation. In situations where Air Force One would be impractical, the Sikorsky UH-34 Seahorse became the first Marine One helicopter to transport the president. Because of this, Marine One is located close to the White House, making it simple for the president to embark and take off safely. Because there is a ton of unoccupied space, the chopper lands on the south lawn of the White House. Additionally, it appears that air travel is not only quicker, cheaper, but also safer. This is due to the fact that two of the four presidential assassinations took place while the president was in the open. Both presidents JFK and McKinley had no idea they would be killed. Because of this, the government invests a lot of time and resources in safeguarding the president. And Marine One appears to be the safest presidential transportation option out of the three. But from where did the name come? The helicopter is known as Marine One only because, if you haven't already, it pushes the like button. Yet the true reason is that the president is on board. Perhaps the bigger Sikorsky VH-3D King or the smaller VH-60N Whitehawk are the actual helicopters, but the Marine Corps refers to them by a different name. Because of its remarkable paint job, which features a white top and a green painted body, they are known as White Tops. It's undeniably a lot better than Marine One. The surface may be attractive, but what about the inside? Although most people believe that helicopters are small and have little to no maneuvering space, this particular helicopter is different. First of all, the 200 square foot cabin gives room for 14 passengers to sit comfortably. The president uses it occasionally to conduct meetings while traveling. What about the loud propellers though? Will the meeting's president have to yell the entire time? In no way! You see, the soundproofing inside these helicopters is so dense that you can hardly hear the motor spinning the propellers. Speaking of meetings and continuous contact, Marine One is always connected to a secure phone line that connects to both the Pentagon and the White House. Only a small portion of the lavish and pleasant interior includes air conditioning and plush leather sofas and chairs. Also, just in case some of the crew members can't hold it for the duration of the journey, this beast even has its own restrooms. The helicopter can maintain flight even if one of its three engines fails because of its 150 mile an hour cruise speed. When we're talking about speed and agility, we were curious about the pilot of Marine One. Marine One requires talent to operate. For this reason, the president, vice president, and other government officials are transported by air from the White House by a special squadron. The Marine Helicopter Squadron One is what they are officially known as, but they also go by the moniker Nighthawks. The VH-3D and the VH-60N helicopters need a pilot, a co-pilot, and a crew chief to operate them. Moreover, a communication systems operator is required for the smaller VH-60N variant. Hence, Justin's team is made up of four of the permitted 11 passengers. You must first join the Marines if you wish to become a pilot. Then you must go through specialized instruction provided by teachers who have received factory training from Sikorsky. Before they can ever get to fly one, the staff must go through one to five months of training, depending on their prior experience. After the initial five months of training, the pilot will be assisted in operating and maintaining the helicopters by a technical Sikorsky representative. Interesting fact, the VH-60N can readily fold and fit into the Air Force C-5 Galaxy should they need to do long flights. As the crew can fold the chopper and board it in less than two hours, this is perfect for some of the abroad excursions the president does. How risk-free is it? Although we said it was safer than a motorcade, how safe are we really talking about? The exterior of the aircraft is genuinely bulletproof, which is the first encouraging truth. Also, the chopper can carry many thousand pounds of luggage and equipment, so there is rarely any missing cargo. Another point is that Marine One never takes off by itself. 
It is typically accompanied by a second helicopter, or in rare instances, four additional helicopters that act as a decoy. In this manner, in the event of a terrorist assault, the attackers would never be aware of which helicopter is transporting the POTUS. Also, these aircraft typically alter their formation upon takeoff to make it more difficult for observers to determine the president's location. This is referred to as the presidential shell game. Of course, we must also address the heavy weapons when discussing Marine One. These include chaff, which is intended to thwart radar-guided missiles and anti-heat-seeking missile flares. Moreover, there is the AN-ALQ-144A Infrared, another missile-blocking tool. This particular helicopter has more advanced anti-missile technology than some other nations. We're not even done yet. We need to discuss the radar jamming trick, the encrypted video conference system, and of course, the mechanism the aeroplane utilizes to shield its critical electronics from nuclear electromagnetic pulses. Let's discuss money. The appropriate cost of each helicopter used by Marine One is $237 million. It's not cheap, that. This is the manufacturing fee Sikorsky received from the government to build the helicopters. Even the expenditures related with fleet maintenance and employees are not included. The original VH-3D and the VH-60N model used as the President's Marine One models currently have some major security elements, but they have been a part of the President's armory for decades. Hence, the Presidential Helicopter Replacement Program was launched by the government in 2003. Lockheed Martin and Sikorsky Aircraft were the two leading candidates for the $6.1 billion contract. The contract was finally concluded by the government and Lockheed Martin in January 2005 after several years of discussions. According to the deal, Lockheed was required to deliver five of the VH-71's less advanced but still contemporary variants by the end of 2010, and the other more advanced models by the end of 2015. In addition to the VH-71's, the government had anticipated retiring the outdated VH-3D and VH-60N variants in 2015. Just the 23 helicopters that were meant to be cutting edge are still in use. We use the word supposed to be because Lockheed Martin didn't keep their word. Three months after that, in March 2008, Lockheed requested an increase in the contract's price. Now the project would cost the American people a staggering $11.2 billion, about twice as much as they had anticipated. They delayed paying them right away because they were concerned about what Lockheed Martin would do with the money. They calculated the cost and discovered that each of the less advanced models that were set to be decommissioned in 2015 would cost them $400 million. That exceeds the genuine Boeing BC-25 aircraft, commonly referred to as Air Force One. They only received the VH-71 models after the deal was terminated because to the spiraling manufacturing costs. The price of the scheme increased to $13 billion by June 2009. If they kept up this pace, Lockheed Martin might have requested a trillion dollars for the remaining 23 helicopters by 2015. After all, they were far superior in any case. The VH-3D and the VH-60N are to be replaced with the more recent VH-92 models, which are based on the S-92 models from prior years, after the American government renewed its contract with Sikorsky. Improvements will be made to the inside as well as the safety equipment. Although the previous versions are quite high-tech, they will preserve the anti-missile systems and encrypted communication systems, but they will arm the helicopters with machine guns instead. Now try attacking them from the air. When the VH-92 helicopters made their initial flight in 2017, everything went without a hitch. Due to how the epidemic has altered things, the original deadline of 2020 has been extended to 2023. The new VH-92s will soon be in view. On a related subject, we were curious if you believe that the government needs these helicopters, or if they are really a waste of money. Tell us in the comments below.